Hi, my name's Cassie, and tonight's project that we're going to be doing is actually inspired by this old vintage clock here. Um, this is a clock that I found at Goodwill, and I just thought it was so neat and cool looking and just too good to pass up on, so I picked it up. But once I got it home, I found that it didn't take batteries. It was too old for that. It's early uh, 1900s clock, actually, so it, it plugs into a wall, which just isn't you know, doesn't have very much purpose now. So um, instead of trying to fix it and use it to tell time, I've decided to use it for a different purpose, which is what inspired this whole project. So you'll have to stay tuned to see how that's going to fit into the finished piece here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is get a piece of wood and you're, we're going to paint it. Now, for this piece of wood, I, I'm using, it's 31 inches by 16 inches. You can use different sizes, that's going to vary on your project, um, and it, it's going to be proportionate to what you're doing, which you'll be able to see in the end video. Um, I had this piece of wood actually lying around, however, you can go to any hardware store and have them cut the lumber for you. So don't be discouraged by, you know, I don't have a piece of wood or I don't have something to cut it with, because you can just take these measurements right into your, your local lumber store and, and have them do it for you, okay? So as you can see, I've already painted this piece. I picked this color because it matches my house. Couple things to keep in mind. We're gonna actually be distressing this wood. I wanna make it look old because my clock is old, so I think that that'll make it look a lot better to make it match. So when you go to do this, you can use as many colors as you want on this piece of wood because they're all gonna come through when we sand it. So I'm only doing one color because this is really the main color in my upstairs that I want I want to use. But if you had two colors, like a nice accent color that you want to bring into that, feel free to give it a couple coats. You could do your base coat and then you can do another coat on top of that. Um, and then, you know, that bottom color will show through as well when you go to sand it, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually distress it. Um, and that's just a term for making it look kind of old, making it look a little bit rough. So I'm gonna use the sander. I'm using a medium grit sandpaper. You don't want to use a super fine because you're not going to get really good results, but you don't want to use the toughest grit either because it'll tear it up a little bit too much. So I'm going to start by just kind of going around the edges. I'm going to pick a couple spots in the center to do. Um, and really on this part, again, don't feel too nervous about it. Don't feel like you're worried about how much to do because it, it's not really going to matter and you'll kind of see that as we go to stain it. So this is going to be allowed for a second, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to go ahead and start to do this piece. Okay, and we're all done with that part. As you can see, I didn't do too much. Um, you know, I, I didn't want it to look overly done, but I just picked a few pieces here around the edge that I did a little bit in the center. And even the stuff that doesn't show up will still show up when we go to stain it. Okay, so now that that part's done, I'm gonna take my rag here and just wipe it free of all that loose sawdust there. So as I was talking about earlier, if you painted this two colors, this is where your other color would be showing through. And as you continue to sand a little bit more, you'll get your natural wood color as well, giving you really three different colors, okay? So next I'm gonna put on my gloves here, because we're gonna be adding the stain. Okay, so I have picked a walnut color stain. Um, I, the darker the better. With, with oak colored stains or lighter colored stains, it really doesn't show up very well on these projects to make, give them that older look. So I recommend a dark walnut color. Okay, so then you're going to dip your brush in. With the brush that you're going to use, I think the cheaper brush the better because, um, you know, it's really hard to get stain out of brushes. So lots of times um, I just like to use cheap brushes that I can throw away, so I kind of buy these in bulk. So I'm going to stop right there. As you can see, I was just putting that on really loosely, nice full coat there. And then I'm going to take my rag and just kind of smooth it out here, okay? 
And I like to do that before I get too far so the stain doesn't really have time to set up too much or get too dry where it's not manageable or easy to work with. Okay. And as you can see, I've got quite a bit of stain on my rag. So I'm actually able to go back over some of those spots and kind of fill them in, give them the color I want. Okay, so you can see here where I've distressed that, that's kind of come through in these spots. So now we're gonna do the other side here. You wanna be really careful when you're using stain too, because the splatter's really easy before you know it. You'll have little spots of stain everywhere. All right, so then we're gonna do this side the same. The neat part about this is too that you can get this as dark as you want um, by adding several coats of stain. So you've got a little bit of play in this spot to get it how you really like it depending on your taste. I don't want to make it too much darker because I don't want to lose too much of that color that I like. So I'm going to just do the one coat and leave it be. Also the less coats you do, the um, leave less amount of time it takes for it to dry. Okay. So that's it, this is the finished product, what our base is gonna look like. I'm gonna kinda set that up there for you to get a better shot. You wanna make sure that you do get your edges as well. Um, so that's kinda what the finished piece will look like. So this will give you an idea when you go to do your project, if you want more of that distressed look or different colors, you'll kinda know how much to do, okay? So this is gonna be the end of the first segment. I'm gonna go ahead and let this piece dry and then we'll come back and we'll start into part two, okay? Thanks.